Hey there, thanks for joining me for another episode of Blind Buys. I really appreciate you taking some time to spend with me as we open another fragrance. We just finished a pretty popular fragrance. Uh, it was a seasonal pick. Uh, stronger with you, absolutely. Fits in with the winter. Um, it was nice. And that was just kind of a personal pick. Now we are getting back into viewer suggested fragrances and another it might fit in with the season it might not our friends i and i and ball 5185 both requested or suggested something from the ancre noir line and as you've seen the title already we are doing ancre noir's sport i thought this would be a better uh introduction to the line there is the fetch code. Um, thought it would be a better introduction to the line than the original Ancre Noir. I've heard the original is possibly polarizing. Sport, in my mind, means a little more user-friendly. But we'll see how that actually turns out. Um, oh dear, I'm really butchering this one. Um, stick around till the other side of the waterfall to see the batch code when it was made, perfumer, price I paid for it, and kind of how I thought this wore out for the amount of time that I wear it out for. Um, crack right into this without, oh, a little bend on the bottom of the box, not a big fan. Comes out something like, like that. Opener on the top. So nothing really too fancy or anything like that. Kind of sits in there like that. And let's see if it was like that. Technically, I guess the La Ligue comes out backwards. But it comes out looking something like that. So, pretty nice. It's got this kind of like grayish kind of theme to it, I would say. A chunky bottle. Nothing really too wild. Ooh, a little plopper on the stopper. Uh, you can see the atomizer a full 180 degrees in the wrong direction. But that's just me being picky. We'll go ahead and give her the old one, two, skidoo, three... Third shot's a little hot, not too crazy. Um, but for main accords on our old Fragrantica cop-out, we've got woody, aromatic, citrus, fresh spicy, earthy, aquatic, and musky. And from what I know of this fragrance, um, just like seeing the notes listing in passing, um, I know this is vetiver heavy, I would say. Um, and I expect this to be very green, which it already is. It reminds me sort of, uh, oh man. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, it sort of reminds me of, of a, um, a, a nice green, like Lacoste, um, somewhere between Lacoste Essential and Lacoste Booster. Booster being too green and not very, not very exciting and essential being not very green, but um, more citrusy, tomato leafy, nice vibe like that. This smells pretty, pretty dang nice so far. Um, not super green. Um, let's just really douse ourselves. I don't know how potent this is going to be. Uh, I think the Ancre Noirs are supposed to be pretty potent, but I don't have anything else to do today. I'm just going to sit at home and probably play some Counter-Strike. Um, so I'm not going to offend anybody by stinking, stinking myself up too badly. There's a barely readable La Lique printed on the top of this um, wood grain cap. I think the cap's might actually be real wood. 
Um, anyways. This is nice. This is, uh, this is really nice so far. More green than woody, I would say. Um, hmm. It's pretty nice. It's, yeah. I don't, I don't have anything bad to say about it right now. Um, in terms of notes on the top, we've got grapefruit, bergamot, and nutmeg. In the middle, it's cypress, watery notes, and lavender. And in the base, it's got the bourbon vetiver, the Haitian vetiver, the cashmere wood, and just some plain old musk. So, what I I think I think that kind of comes together, makes a green fragrance, uh, cypress, lavender for a little bit of herbiness, double vetiver um, to kind of dry it out, maybe if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, it's very nice so far. I don't think this is unpleasant. I think this is a, a nice way to step into the Ancre Noir line. Um, citrusy on the top. If you really stick your nose too far in there, you get uh, a nice citrusy, somewhat musky fragrance. It kind of reminds me of uh, Le Mal, not Le Mal, yeah, Le Mal Pride Edition kind of thing where it's... Uh, um, fruity musky because that's basically just pure like citrus and musk um there's some more going on in this um it's, it's nice it, it just it comes together in in a, a non-offensive way i kind of expect this to be a lot more boastful and brash and it just really isn't it's a little more subdued than i thought it would be um, so I think I'm going to have to wear this for a good solid week or so, really work out how it, how it works. Um, right now it doesn't feel actually all that wintry. I would say this is kind of like a, a coolish spring sort of fragrance so far, but we're going to have to see how it wears out for an entire week under some layers and some things like that. And we'll get back to you on the other side of the waterfall. So thanks for sticking with me, you guys. Alrighty, folks, it's been at least a week. I forget exactly which day I opened this, but it's been given a fair shot. So it's about time that we wrap up our thoughts on Lalique's Ancre Noir Sport. This fragrance came out in 2013, so it's already 11 years old. Um, and if it's still in production, I'm not 100% sure. But if it has, if it is, it's withstood the test of time. And as such, it's still available to be purchased on the grain market um, a decade on after its release. In terms of um, perfumer, uh, it's a prolific name. Somebody we just saw pretty recently. She did Bentley's for men. Uh, yeah, Bentley for him intense. Uh, she is Natalie Lorson. Also attributed to her are all three Ancre Noirs. And Givenchy Gentleman, Givenchy Gentleman, Reserve Privé, couple Issey Miyake, both the Fusions, and Victor and Rolf, uh, Spice Bomb Night Vision EDT, and like a hundred or so other women's perfumes. A uh, lot of work done by this by this woman. Uh, so she knows what she's doing. I'll give it to her for sure. Uh, in terms of batch code, we've got F0, F21, which gives us a June 2021 birth date, a couple years old uh, for this bottle, but I don't believe it's lacking anything performance-wise. I got this from Fragrance Net for a massive price of $27.59. They put 3.3 ounces on the bottle, so that's what we go with. And that gives us an $8.36 per ounce price tag. That's pretty dang low. That is cheapy tech territory uh, at $8 an ounce. It's kind of hard to say this is anything except a good deal. Um I really had a good time wearing this fragrance. I think the performance is very good. 
And at that price, when I, when I look back at what I paid for it, I was quite surprised. I thought this cost more than it did. Um, I know the Ancre Noirs are on the cheaper side, but I didn't think it was $27.59 cheap. Um, for projection, I give it like a five in my notebook, but it's like four to five out of 10, 4.5. Um, it's good, but it doesn't push through multiple layers. Um, so not like super winter fragrance, um, you know, late spring, you could wear this through summer, fall, um, just doesn't really push through winter layers. Uh, not every fragrance needs to. In terms of longevity, it's like a good work day, man. Like six to eight hours, I really felt like this was pretty darn good. Like I said, for $27.59, I was quite surprised um, getting a full work day out of it and then sort of needing a reapplication in the evening or giving uh, given an opportunity to take a take a turn and wear something different in the evening if I wanted to. Uh, it didn't really box me into a corner. I didn't have to really worry about um, layering or anything crazy like that. I'm never really worried too much about layering as it is. If one fragrance is sticky, I just wear it all day. Um, what I really got out of this fragrance is a clean, fresh, dry citrus that's reminiscent of Issey Miyake's Low DC for uh, Pour Ohm. Uh, I believe it's the vetivers mixing with a citrusy top, a citric top that really just kind of plays very nicely together. Um, I've heard vetiver is uh, slight, slightly pol polarizing, but as, as far as I can tell, I, I've found it to be nothing except pleasant um so if you if you mix the the vetiver with the citrus i think it works out pretty nice there's also a greenness to this fragrance for sure um i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it but the juice itself is even quite green greenish blue um the, uh, the cypress note in there, it's piney and it really does lend to a greenish, um, a green vibe to it. If you really drive your nose in there, you get sort of an Irish spring soapy ty uh, type of vibe to it. Um, but just overall sniffing like in the air like any normal human would do, um, it just has a green edge to it in addition to the um the citrus and dry vetiver the fresh dry um vetiver uh, i think that's kind of what it kind of what it is and um i got really nice wafts throughout the day uh dry citric wafts um that's primarily what i think this fragrance is going to give you um and I don't think it's really all that bad for daily wear. I don't find it to be offensive, and I don't really know why anybody would find it all that offensive. Um, of course, there's always going to be somebody who is not super stoked on what you're doing, what you're wearing, but that's just their problem, whatever. Uh, I don't think this fragrance is very offensive. So... For less than $30, um, I don't want to give it a hard, like, you should go out and buy this. But at the same time, it's cheap enough and good enough that I'm like, this should probably be on your radar. Um, this probably more than the other Ancre Noirs, maybe. If you want to see me open those, let me know. Obviously, we'll get into those. We can compare and contrast. Um... But I think this sport is just a nice, inoffensive offering that's going to fit a lot of good vibes for everybody. And that's really all there is to it. I'll throw a disclaimer up and we'll get out of this one scot-free. So guys, find something that's as unique as you are. Wear it unabashedly. 
Until the next time I see you, talk to you, or anything else. Take it easy, you guys. Thanks.